I'm Stefan Alexander. I am uh, leading the advanced R&D group at Thalmic Labs, and I'm going to talk to you today about gesture control and smart glasses in the workplace. So the types of smart glasses interactions that uh, kind of we and a lot of our partners are seeing in the workplace tend to be very mobile. Uh, they're very quick interactions. And they're often used to augment another activity. So it's hard to do these things while also holding something in your hand. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the Myo armband, which is what I'm using right now to control this presentation. So it measures the electrical activity from my muscles to detect what gesture my hand is making. So it does this actually using these uh, eight electromyography sensors um, built into the band itself. And then we take a look at all of the data and the signals that come off of that, um, use some signal processing and machine learning algorithms, and then actually end up detecting gestures with that as well. It also senses all the motion rotation of my hand and forearm, which is how I can control the pointer in this presentation as well. So the Mayo actually recognizes five distinct hand gestures up here. Um, and it allows me to take control of a uh, phone, computer, um, other digital technologies with simple and intuitive gestures. So we also think that the Mayo is an ideal control for the mobile quick and hands-free control that you need with a lot of smart glasses applications. Uh, for example, doctors can bring up patient information without breaking eye contact, without touching their glasses, without holding anything in their hand, or without using any voice. Uh, and this is essential in these kind of patient interactions. Uh, gestures are faster and more reliable in many noisy workplace situations, such as when you're uh, maybe taking a picture to uh, document a defect. Um, so I just have a quick video here that shows some of these concepts in, in more detail. Google Glass is a completely new type of display and it requires novel forms of input. We have a lot of challenges when creating solutions around smart glasses, particularly around how the human interacts with them. You could be trying to use voice in a noisy environment. You could be using touch in an environment where you have a gloved hand. We have to give our users the ability to still have rich interactions even when those are non-viable solutions. Mobile technology really makes so much sense in construction. They're mobile workers, they're on the go, they don't have their computer with them. You know, having to take your gloves off, having to put your materials down, that's not an option. There are a lot of businesses out there whose business model really depends on logistics, where a small difference in how productive an employee is can make a huge difference in the success of the company. The Mayo is a device that's in a class of its own. It's, it's going to start just a, a new wave of how people interact with content. So, as you can see, the Mayo is also a, a pretty good presentation controller. Um, it lets me control this presentation, and so this, this is kind of what the Mayo is really about, is this, this interaction at a distance. When you're away from something else, when you have these virtual screens, um, when you don't necessarily want to be right next to your computer. Um, so I can control the presentation without holding everything, um, without holding anything in my hand, I can move around. Um, it lets me, uh, you know, use a virtual laser pointer and zoom in when I want to. Um, and um, this, this is kind of a simple interface that our software team built up for presentations with this kind of variety of, uh, you know, movement and presentations um, and, you know, these particular kinds of gestures. But I'm sure you can think of a possibility for using these gestures and movements for a lot of the motion that would be perfect um, for various types of smart glasses applications. Um, so, you know, combining different types of gestures, combining movements, combining them with the context in the smart glasses application. So there's an SDK available for Mac, Windows, Android, and iOS that lets you integrate all these things in there. Lots of sample applications, lots of things that developers have already posted with this. So we've shipped over 50,000 Mayos already. It's uh, $1.99. You can buy it on Amazon.com and Mayo.com. Uh, 
Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Questions? I just have a basic question about um, the sort of motions that it can detect. Because I see in the video a lot of people have their arm kind of raised when they're doing the motion. Can it detect yep. uh, gestures when your hand is, I guess that's what you're doing. Yeah, you're absolutely. Doing um, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be up. It can be in any position at all. Um, for the video, it's, it's nice to be able to show it. But most of the time when I'm doing it, I'm doing it like down here. Oh, it's not on. But uh, yeah, you can do all the gestures down here in, in any orientation. It's muscle only dependent, so it, it doesn't matter. Is there, um, is there like some sort of, set, uh, is it communicating with like via Bluetooth or like what is the? Yeah, yeah, it uses Bluetooth low energy. Um, so any device that has Bluetooth low energy, it'll, it'll connect directly to that. I have a question, Stefan. Yeah. What, what's the calibration on that like? <laughs> Uh, so actually, when you when you put it on initially, um, you have to make a, a sync gesture because it has to know the kind of the composition of your muscles. Every person's muscle signature looks totally different. You can also put it on kind of in two different directions and then also any orientation. Um, so you put it on your arm and you make a gesture that looks like this, and it uh, basically calibrates it to your arm, and that's it. And it works. That's that's all the calibration you need. It's about a two second gesture. Cool. How much um, customization can a user, you know, I mean, because I'm watching you talk and you're moving your arms, like, for one person that might be a natural movement to, I don't know, different menu options. Like, how much, how much vocabulary is there that a user can develop? Yeah, so there's, there's kind of five built-in uh, gestures, and the reason we did that instead of letting people pick their own gestures is because uh, we wanted that really quick and easy calibration, and we also wanted the ability for... Um, things to mean the same in the same context. So, uh, you know, some gestures might look very different to us, like, like you know, kind of everybody wants to make a gun motion in games, but this gesture and this gesture actually look almost identical from a muscle signature standpoint. So we wanted gestures that were different from muscle signature so that there was no false positives, so it's really, really reliable. Um, and we wanted a common design language so that, you know, this wave in and wave out always kind of mean backwards and forwards, and the fist always means kind of a, you know, a modulate so you can twist and move with it. Uh, and the spread fingers always means kind of select or play and pause. Um, it, it, it's, it's possible with it to use a version of the SDK that lets you make your own gestures, but in those gestures, unless you have tons of machine learning algorithms and lots of data, it's really only going to work for you. It's not going to work for everybody. Quick question. Um, the calibration, can that also serve as a biometric identity secure kind of format so that uh, if you're working with a sensitive or uh, potentially dangerous environment it, it knows it's only you yeah so that I mean the that's definitely possible uh, we, we haven't done that software I haven't we released any software integration for that yet but the muscle signatures that we get are incredibly unique we actually get a huge heartbeat signal and reject it too uh, just to, we filter it out um, but there's we haven't shown anything but there's lots and lots of possibilities for very good authentication because your muscle signatures are very unique even like from a f just fascinating your every people every person makes a fist in a different way too I mean some people make it more like this or like this or like this and they hold it differently um, so it's not just the biological muscle signal it's also the way that we train ourselves to make gestures is very different hi um I'm just wondering, do you uh, have a capacity, if there's several people wearing a Mayo, to uh, communicate between the bands? Like, to have um, sort of synchronized movement? I'm thinking of a friend of mine, Daniel, who's actually using this, uh, the Mayo band, to do yeah. artistic projections. Yeah, and yeah. they look fabulous. I don't, I, I don't know if you've seen his work, but... Um, oh, that's really neat. Yeah, it is. Um, and so what he uses it for is uh, that he dances and the projections that are mapped on a sculpture type then change according to his movement. Mm. And so from that perspective, I'm wondering if you had more than one person using the Mayo band and then being able to project, let's say, a a group painting, if you will, um, is that possible? I mean, 
technically speaking? Yeah, yeah. So, so from a technical standpoint, you can have um, you know lots of over a dozen Bluetooth devices connected with. Uh, if you want to track motion really accurately with the amount of data that we're sending, I think most of our SDKs support four devices um, right now. Um, just just so you can have it you know re reliable in a noisy environment. But um, you know, I I wonder if it would be possible to do more. It, it, it should be technically possible. I, I don't know the SDK out of the box doesn't support more than four right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. As you're tapping your hands on, the, on your pocket, you're drawing on the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I turned on the pointer. <laughs> we have time for one more quick question. How, how do you customize? Can you customize it for other things? For example, if I wanted to use it to mm, control the sound system in my home or like. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. So there's there's lots of out of the box interactions we've built in. Um, so you can control, um, you know, like like drones and remote control toys, um, Netflix, uh, iTunes, um, you know, Hulu, different kinds of video players. That's that's huge too. So there's built in interactions for that. Um, there is obviously like PowerPoint. Uh, there's a built in keyboard mapper. So you just say whatever application you want. Uh, this application, you know, when you make the Mayo gesture in this way, it's going to mean this key or this mouse movement. Um, and of course, if you want to get deeper, there's a whole SDK you can build into the device at the same time. And there's, there's, we have a Mayo marketplace where people post their own connectors and their own um, scripts and customized keyboard mapping. So you can just go and usually download something from there and control pretty much anything you want, even if you're not a developer. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Thanks.